uh, just a couple of verses, verses 30 to 32, and just to get us uh, thinking uh, Jesus' thoughts, we'll uh, take a look at that. Uh, Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 30, says, Jesus said, how can I describe the kingdom of God? Think about that for a second even. What if somebody asked you at school, work, whatever, kind of just said, hey, I know you're a Christian, you go to church. What's this whole kingdom of God like? What do you, what do you mean, heaven? What do you mean the kingdom of God? How, you know, what would you say? <laughs> you know, it might cut, catch us off guard a little bit, you know, in a sense. But again, here's what we have, and Jesus says, this is how you can understand or begin to describe the kingdom of God. What story could, should I use to illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches, and birds can make nest in its shade. And the passage, of course, goes on, and, and Jesus talks about similar stories. But what, what do we have? In a sense, just in a couple of verses, verse 30, 31, and 32, we have a, a, a parable, which is also known just as a story. It's kind of a snapshot, picture, glimpse to understand the kingdom of God. Again, as we think about that, I mean, obviously as Christians we believe in eternity. Do we live in light of that? Hopefully. <laughs> that our perspective is eternal, that things that we do, things that we say, our attitude, our actions, everything that we're about, it should be focused on the kingdom of God. So if we don't understand it, but, you know, we turn to Scripture, it doesn't give us an absolute 100% detail that we know everything about heaven and can just write a full report. So we get little glimpses, little snapshots. This is one of them. The kingdom of God is like that of a mustard seed. Wow. So what is that? You know, just maybe so we can even partially understand, don't spill these or you'll know, somebody will be vacuuming. <laughs> And uh, I used to keep stuff like this on my desk, and my kids would come in because I like to just have it as an illustration. I mean, you know, somebody comes in my office and we talk or something, but uh, they would just eat these things, and then they would they would have no more mustard seed. But here you can take a look at just when the when the Bible says a mustard seed and how small it is. I mean, it's just tiny, and yet it grows to be one of the biggest. So how is this a snapshot of the kingdom of God? Anybody want to take any guesses how? When, when Jesus is using this as that illustration, how is the kingdom of God like a mustard seed? Any, any, any guesses? You're on camera, but we, you know, we won't show anybody. <laughs> anybody want to, I mean, it, it's small, isn't it? So how, any, any guesses kind of how that might be kind of a snapshot, a picture of the, uh, of the, of the kingdom of God? <laughs> Watch me be the one to spill them all. How, how did the kingdom of God start small like a mustard seed? Want me to give you a hint? Okay, I'm going to give you an obscure hint. Diaper. I, I know, that's, a, that's a horrible hint. But I, I, can't, I can't just totally give it away. What do you think? How did the kingdom of God start so small like that of a seed of a mustard seed? Let's see. December 25th, we celebrate his birthday. Jesus. In a sense, was that mustard seed. In a sense. Not absolutely identical by any means, but small. A baby came into the world. I mean, even as you think as, as Mary was pregnant with, with, with Jesus, just like any other pregnancy, you, you know, kind of thing. I mean, it started as a seed, obviously, miraculously by the Holy Spirit. And, oh, wow, there you have it started so small, and yet what do, we, what do we at least understand about the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus initially came how? As a humble servant. I mean, that's what kind of threw Israel off. They were expecting this mighty king. All right, we're going to, you know, we're going to do some, ah, we're going to take over, we're going to take control of this. And they were, they were so upset, and they just didn't understand that Jesus came the first time as a humble servant. Riding in on what? A donkey. Kind of like, no, nah, I'm going to date myself. It'd be like driving into church and, <laughs> well, as soon as I say this, someone will drive in and I'm like, oh, where you go, where you go, pastor? Yeah. But an old, I don't know, an old Ford Pinto or maybe, uh, maybe uh, Chevy uh, Vega, I, some old car, you just go, really? Really, people still drive those things? I, I don't know. Yeah, I drove for a while. I drove an old 
Chevy Metro. My kid, it was almost purple Barney color. It was, it was, and I was working with Marines. Yeah, that's that's kind of embarrassing. But I, I go, well, I don't care what you know. That's all right. I'll, I'll drive it. You know. But Jesus came so humble, and yet when He comes in His second coming, the second advent, it's it's going to be the opposite. He will come on that white horse. He will come as a king. In a sense, so here you have that snapshot of understanding the kingdom of God, that which started so small. And yet it just will continue to grow and be enormous. It started as, you know, that small, humble child, a baby. And yet Jesus brought salvation to the world. Obviously, if you, you can look at Revelation 19 and kind of grab more of that, we're not going to... Kind of not going to open that can of worms necessarily today, and yet uh, important to understand. And yet, so when he says, wow, it's like the size of a mustard seed. You know, my, my title for this is The Measure of Magnificence. We kind of talked about it last time I was here, kind of, you know, with it being January and the new year, and, and how, do we, how do we measure success? You know, I have people measure it a lot of different ways, you know, and yet... You know, we, could, we, we looked at Scripture even before last January of Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 to 9, and how God defines and measures success. If he, he and she who meditates on the Word of God day and night, then you will be successful. Don't swerve from, from the left or to the right. Stay on path. You know, but yet, how does the world, in a sense, measure magnificence? You know, oh, this person was magnificent. Why? Because of what they accomplished? Okay. You know, how, how, do we, how do we do that? You know, if we, if we look at the mustard seed, anything that size, it, and we think, oh, a mustard seed, that would never amount to anything. You know, how often do we, do we just measure magnificent in so many different ways? Maybe our own size, you, 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 know, uh, you know, just different things. And we measure pers- persons or, or life and goals and different things, their purpose and usefulness, maybe by size. And if by a mustard seed, we say, oh, absolutely useless. You know? Hopefully we never hear those words. But we can. And we could. And the world could define it. You know, we might be in our safe little environment here, but as soon as we go out the gate, right, the world just <laughs> bombards us, be it at, at school or work or wherever. Maybe, maybe family. Maybe extended family. Maybe one of your best friends that, that doesn't view things the way you view. Don't, doesn't have the same values. Maybe you go spend time at a friend's house and their family has oh, totally different values. That just you know, my kids and mine are older, and I told you this before. They're 25, 23, and 22. You know, and it's fun when they as we get together again and stuff because they're all over. Two are in Colorado, one's in Nebraska, and, and we were just with them last week. It was it was wonderful. But you know, I, it makes me feel good as a dad, and, and when they come and say, you know, just say thanks, yeah, <laughs> thanks, you know. Because as they spend time with different families, different people, and maybe see, uh, you know, some some maybe horrible situations of just a family life, some things that that just things are valued differently. And, and even though they may not wholeheartedly agree with me all the time by any means, <laughs> which is good and bad, you know, but it is what it, you know. But yet, how do we measure? A person's purpose, their usefulness. If we only go by, and it's in size, the size of a mustard seed, then we are we go, we can't measure it that way. That's not the way God measures it. God, fortunately, doesn't see us of who we are today, but what we can become for Him tomorrow. And being able to see that, it's kind of an old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, don't, don't judge a person by their size, in a sense. By, by, by if you know, the size of a mustard seed. However, however, we kind of figure that out. I had an executive officer. It was kind of funny. This was a Marine executive officer. And, you know, most Marines are like, you know, or, you know, okay, okay, right here. Just throw them some nails and they'll have, you know, I'm going to on those things. Like, oh, that's good, you know. And, I don't know. and so we were, when I went to Iraq in 07, uh, the worst part of that whole deployment was the training in Yuma, Arizona. I kid you not. I had a better living situation in Iraq <laughs> in this like portable miniature little mobile homey thing. And I had my own, so it was awesome. I mean, I had everything. They're like, man, this ain't so bad. I mean, really, it wasn't that bad. Honestly, I have to confess. I, you know, I praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I mean, it was. But the training, my, my assistant and I, we got the wrong list for the type of gear we were supposed to bring. We got the list for summertime. I didn't know any better. So we took this certain sleeping bag that was like for 
Oh, you know, summertime, like, oh, we're going to go out and camp with the boys. Woo! You know, kind of thing. Or the girls. All right. Okay. You're, you're going to feel a little campy. And, you know, so there we are. Well, Yuma was nice during the day. At night, it was freezing. Freezing. And me and my assistant, of course, I wasn't with him. He was with other other people, and he froze, too. I was freezing. Every night, I'm like, okay, this is going to be a long 10 days, because that's what the training was. Oh, man. The, ex, the executive officer would call him an XO. The commanding officer would call him a CO, XO, CO kind of thing. So the XO, bless his heart, I, they, they have these certain poncho blankets that they're kind of almost nylon-y, silky, almost. They, it, every night, it would slide off. Whoop. I'm like, well, that's really helpful. <laughs> I, my prayer every night would be, oh, please, God, don't, don't, let, let me get through the night with having, without having to get up and have to go to the bathroom. Please, 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 please. I, I mean, really, that's really spiritual, isn't it? That's my prayer. Well, because, man, you get out, you have to get out of that tent and go walk to, because you, know, you don't have a bathroom right there. I mean, you got to go walk. You're like, oh, you know, it's just, oh, my, and it's just, oh, it was miserable. And that, that's not even cold weather training that they do special, like up north in northern California. Like, praise God, I've never had to do that. I've talked to some other chaplains. Who they go, oh, that was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta do it. That's talk about you know, like Jesus got among us. I mean, that's how we feel sometimes. Like, we're just with them. And if they're gonna go deploy, we're gonna be with them. It's, it's a great, it's awesome, it's amazing. Uh, and it's very challenging, it's very convicting. Because, you know, it's not like coming coming to a church and go, okay, they just they just see the pastor on Sunday or Wednesday. You know, look, you're living with these folks day in and day out. They see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You have a bad hair day, they're going to see it. You know, if you're deployed for whatever, six months, a year, or whatever, you know, you're going to have probably at least one bad hair day, you know, kind of thing. But So so here we are, I'm sleep, trying to sleep, and my little blanket slides off. The XO, this gnarly arr, marine, Every night would get up and put it back on me. <laughs> like, like, thanks, mom. You know, I, was, I, was all, I never said that to him. <laughs> you know, because then it would have been the blanket, then punch probably, or something like, okay, I'll go to sleep. You know, maybe I would have knocked me out and I would have slept good. I don't know. He also slept well. And uh, so, you know, but it, what was funny about that, he, he, he just was a nice guy, truly. I mean, I've met some of the you know, greatest, greatest folks in the military, and it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. But he had this saying, Kind of like that, that, don't judge a book by its cover. He would say, he would say <laughs> as nice of a guy as he was, do not mistake my kindness for weakness. And it kind of just, he wasn't talking to me, but to, his, to the Marines and those, he goes, you know, if I need to be, <laughs> you know, Arr! you know, be the hammer, be the Old Testament kind of uh, guy, not the New Testament grace and mercy, you know. I can switch gears real easy, you know. Like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like that if we if we judge things. I mean, look, what's one of the best stories of that of a mustard seed kind of small feller doing a mighty work? David and Goliath. Wow, I man, his brothers went to what are you doing here? Oh, you're just, he's just a shepherd. He's just an errand boy. You know, just, wow. And, and yet, the world. How does the world measure a person's value by size? You know. Either maybe not big enough to, you can't go over, or maybe too big. You know, you can't play football, you can't do that, you can't, you know, whatever. Whatever it might be. Or looks. Or what about strength? GPA. Oh, you're not smart enough to go to college. <laughs> I had a, a dear, dear friend. Of course, we, we kind of laugh. And, and again, I graduated from Biola in 1981. And, and the guy's name is Ray Tui. And my first name is Ray, and we were uh, roommates and, and with, with other guys. And so all through, his, his last name is spelled T-U-O-H-Y. So we were known through college and even seminary. He didn't go to seminary, I did, but we were, we were still buddies, and we still are today. And we go by, people will call us Ray Oney. That was me. And Ray Tui. They would give us shirts. They would give us coffee mugs with, like, the number one or two on it with a letter E. Like, I mean, still to this day, like, hey, Wendy, hey, Tui. You know, I mean, I mean it's, it's just one of those things. I, this guy is very, very successful businessman. God, and because the man is, is just a, a generous, giving guy, and God has just blessed his business. I, I believe he, he owns, it's, this does not, like, float my boat. Storage units. That's his business. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. But he just, he, he, God has blessed him. And I think as an individual, he's one of the third largest that may, I want to say in the nation, but I don't know that 100% because I don't really care. I just know he's my friend. 
But in high school, you know what they told him? They had teachers that would say, you will never amount to anything. Why? Because it's just, whatever, because <laughs> the size of our brains. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you didn't get the same <laughs> brain the size of a mustard seed. Come on, God, make it grow! You know what I mean? But, and, and really, we kind of laugh, and the, the bar has been raised so high, and in a good way, I think, in some ways, um, it, it, at a place even like Biola, that we look at each other today, and we go, yeah, we'd never get in. I mean, I, honestly, I, I, I just tell you, I just, you know, it's by the grace of God getting through some of these things, you know, and, and yet, and yet that's how the world sometimes measures success, and there's certain aspects about that, depending on what we want to do. Now, if I want to do that, I mean, was I really geared to go to seminary and do that, and you know, I mean, it took me five years to get through Viola, three years, you know, obviously to get through seminary, because that's just what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a three-year master's program. I mean, I, when I started school, I just thought, I thought it just amounted to, if you love Jesus and love kids, I just want to be a youth pastor. You, you know, I mean, I, I, that was it. I, really, you got to go to school for that? <laughs> really? Really? You know, I, and, 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 but that's okay, and understand what we got to do to do what we want to do and what we feel God calling us to do. But then how does the world look at that? You know, maybe maybe IQ, maybe maybe speed. You know, oh, they're really, oh, their body, or or you know, the list could just go on, isn't it? In terms of how we compare and how we measure uh, a person's value or magnificence or success or or you know whatever. And if we if if, if it's maybe the size of a mustard seed, whatever. Then we think, ah, never any use. It's, it's not going to happen. You know. And yet, again, I even I even look at myself and, and being in the military now as of February, I, I, I went over 20 years. I'm now I've been in the Navy for over 20 years. Like, wow, people ask me if I'm going to retire one of these days. I always used to say, no, my wife won't let me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be one of many things. And we don't make as much money, and I'm at home. Like, really, uh, you just keep working. Okay, you know, and I love my job. So I, 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 it would be silly to retire right now. Even though I could, I could turn in papers and I could retire. I was like, I don't know, it's a great job. I love it. Still serving God in this capacity, unless He just so showed me something. You know, and, and he could do that. <laughs> I remember when he changed our path from doing youth ministry in Lincoln, Nebraska, where we thought we'd be all our life. And we've traveled around the world, and here we are back in California after not living here since uh, 1988. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just, it's amazing how, how what God wants to use. And yet, I, I look at myself sometimes, even as I, in uniform, I look in the mirror, and I still kind of have to laugh and pinch myself. I go, and my friends, I mean, if I do reunions and we get together, not just college friends, but more so high school friends that knew me, you know, way back. Yeah, like, that's a long, that's a long time ago. Yeah, I graduated from high school in 1975, and, you know, and they, we, we've done some reunions of some of a lot of our Christian friends from uh, an old youth organization called Youth for Christ Campus Life, and we've done some 70s reunion stuff, and it's just, it's just fun, you know, and, and, and it's still, you know, and I, I, I look at myself and go, I am the least likely candidate to be in the military. My wife would be more geared for the military. She, her mind wrap is that way. I mean, she would, she would be the 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 the, the, the XO from Hades. There, I'll put it that way. I mean, I just she would be. Oh man, she'd be a tough executive officer. Her brain just kind of. She's a critical thinker. You're like, oh, okay, why this, why that? I mean, she she knows how to ask those hard questions. I've faced them all my life. My son has. You know, I mean, like, no, no, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I mean, she, like, you know, where I'm, that's like even my wife and I say, if we were, were to write a book, God forbid, on parenting, yeah, you wouldn't want it. Now it'd be fun read. And uh, it'd be when one parent's from the Old Testament and one from the New. Yeah, my wife is the old. She's like that minor prophet. Just black and white, boom. She just does not cut around, cut, cut corners. I, I kind of beat around the bush a little bit, like, ah, okay, let's see. When my son, uh, the first time, I have to admit, got caught and got busted for possession of marijuana. Now, we were still in Japan. We were in Okinawa. He was in North Carolina. He graduated from high school. We, we uh, had him go back to the States, and, um, and he got in trouble. And, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, my wife is so direct. Her question to my son was, Corbin, just where was God in all this? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would've, it would have taken me about eh, a couple hours to ask. I don't know, whatever. I just got... And, and, and my son's response to her was, well, Mom, I think he was with the policeman. <laughs> it was, I had, we had to laugh. It was funny, okay? Even when you're mad and you're angry, you're like, ah, 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 ah. you know, it was just, it was 
was funny. She hadn't even laughed. And, 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 and she laughs a lot, but, uh, you know, in that situation, I mean, just, you know, so, man, you know, and, 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 and just looking at things, and, and, and again, just that, that candidate for, for the military. And I still, just, I go, I can't believe this was a good fit. I would not have chosen it for myself, honestly. Honestly. God damn. Unfortunately, I had this. <laughs> you know, and I needed a job. You know, so because I had resigned from the church, I'm like, okay, God, what's next? Really, what's next? I mean, we were married, had three little kids, kind of thing. And yet, wow. And, uh, and like I say, here we are. You know, but it's amazing to me. Uh, you know, not only that, but I think you know we give God maybe mustard seed size size of, of, of things from our life at times. You know, for for me, I grew up going to church. And then in junior high, my, my folks, I, I think, was really hindsight probably not the right thing. But they gave me the option to go to church or not. Now, I, I shouldn't say like most kids, because I don't know if that's really a fair, uh, I'm not going to ask you, I'm not going to put you on the spot, especially since the camera's on. Cheers. And, um, and, um, but with that said, um, they gave me the option in junior high to go to church or not. Want to guess which option I took? <laughs> you know, and you know, now fortunately or unfortunately, the church wasn't a real evangelical church, so I probably didn't miss a whole lot. Honestly, it was, it was a very kind of social gospel sort of thing. Like, hey, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. That just means everybody automatically goes to heaven. I mean, that was kind of the message that that church gave out, uh, which is wrong. We each need to make that personal decision. Is it true that Jesus died for the sins of the whole world? Absolutely. Is that automatically applied to every person? No. You know, so it's just it's just interesting. And, and so I didn't need to go. I didn't have to go. You know what I was? I didn't go though? I was part of the C and E crowd. Anyone want to guess what the C and E crowd is? Okay, I already mentioned it once and trying to give you a, a, a hint of how the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. I mentioned the C word. And the E word is coming up, April 20th. Okay, that, 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 okay, those are two awesome hints right there. And we're not moving on until somebody gets it. What's the C stand for? What do you think? Christmas. All right, what does the E stand for? Oh, you guys are so hard. You guys rock. All right. Uh, we pounded if I was closer, but that's all right. So, yeah. And next time you sit up front, we'll pound it. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was me. And how many people do we even know just in the world or maybe part of that kind of C and E crowd? Christmas and Easter. And then we could also add funerals and weddings. You know, the F and W. I, I don't know. You know, oh, it's Christmassy. But that was me. That was me. You know how much time I was willing to give God? About a mustard seed of my time and my energy, which was not much, was it? But to me, it's amazing what God is willing and can use, even a mustard seed size, and I, I qualify it this way, of time. Okay, God, this is all I'm giving you. Hmm, see what you can do with that. I, I never said that to God. Okay, I, I would have probably ended up like a little Ziggy cartoon, like, well, he was there a second ago, and now all we see is this puff of smoke. Poof, you know? But, but again, it was kind of like that. You know, and... and, and that mustard seed of time, and maybe thinking, maybe likewise, we think, ah, what do I have really to offer God? You, you know, uh, some of you were musical, awesome talent. You know, you go, okay, then offer that. Here it is, God. What do you want to do? You, want to do? you, you know, uh, it, it may be something else for somebody else. Man, I, I envy. I try not to be jealous. I really shouldn't be envious. But do, do, we, do you ever feel that way sometimes? Man, I wish I could do that like that. You know, like, like Maybe yourself or somebody else, some, some other talent or gift or whatever they might have. Oh, man. I mean, I hear guys play the guitar. They're just amazing. I go, man, I wish I could play like that. And not, and not just play, but sing. That, that's my, you know, that, that's my problem, really. I, I, you know, my singing and playing ability, try to put those two things together. It's like a, a kindergarten report card does not play well with others. Okay. You know, and, and you realize, I tell my wife I'm leading worship for, for any kind of thing, church or what, you know, can't, whatever. She goes, I, I think I'll be sick today. <laughs> oh, come on, dear. Is it that bad? Well, honey, you know, well, okay. You know, there's my mustard seed size, and I've had to do it before. Like, it, it, you know, where I said, and fortunately, God has always brought amazing people around me, even in the military, even when we've been deployed, phenomenal worship leaders. Amazing. I mean, just 
some young kids are like, oh, wow, you know, you just you don't know who you're going to end up with. On a deployment, and there we were in Iraq, we had some of the best worship. I mean, it was amazing. We had this full-on worship band. I mean, and, and people were excited about it. It got them through the deployment. And people that hadn't really, some of them hadn't really been, they are part of that CD crowd, hadn't really been a part of church that much. But they were willing to come on, and they were, they were musical. And, and, you know, and, 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 and you go, wow. And they, and they kind of got excited. Their faith got rekindled. And, you know, it's just amazing what God can use. And it kind of reminds me of Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. You probably know the story, right? The feeding of the 5,000. Yeah, okay, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quiz you again. Okay, you, you haven't done real well so far. I, I don't know if we should push it to this level, but okay, with the fish and bread, right? Anybody remember how many fish they had and how many loaves of bread they started with? What's that? You are... Oh, okay, i got to come. Okay, I'm going to walk all the way. Oh, where to go? Yeah. I, I, you know, in my head, I always get the numbers switched around, kind of dyslexic or something. I don't know. It's like, what did the dyslexic atheist say? There is no dog. Uh, okay. You can just think about that for a while. But, yeah, I do. I always like, okay, was it was it two fish and five breads, or was it five fish? I, you know, really, does, does it really matter? No. No. But they didn't have much to offer, did they? And there's probably aspects in each one of our lives that we feel that way, like, okay, God, here's my, here's my couple of fish, here's my five, whatever. I mean, and or we like the disciples. What was their reaction to it all? <laughs> Send them all home. Get them out of here. They're hungry. And go, and I, but Jesus didn't respond that way with them, did he? It's kind of that mustard seed size. Here, here it is, a couple, couple fish. Like, it's like a, you know what I love to do when I usually preach on exactly Matthew chapter 14? I love to bring in a McDonald's fish sandwich. Last, I preached on that not too long ago in, in uh, Long Beach at the church where my wife and I met. It was very fun. It was just fun to be back there like that. So I went over to McDonald's. I was too early. I couldn't get a fish sandwich. I guess I needed it. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, man, I wanted it for, you know. Of course, then everybody would have been, oh, we would have passed it around like this. And we had little bites out of the fish sandwich, you know. But again, it's kind of that idea, right? A lot of times we go, I don't have much to offer. A couple, couple fish. Five loaves of bread. Yeah, I guess what 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 can God really do with that? And however we may, you know, and, and, and maybe even if we don't think that, maybe the world kind of forces us to think that way. Yeah, you don't really got much to offer. Or we're just having one of those bad hair days where we just think, God, really? I don't, I don't know. God, really? This is what you want to do? I don't know. And yet the disciples were willing just to, to pack it up and send everybody away, and Jesus said, Time out. <laughs> No, that's not how we operate here. That's not. Let's let's make this a God thing. You know, we, we could we could we could look at it as the world looks at it and say, yeah, it's just time to, to turn out the lights and, and go home. Why? Why even put out any more effort? And you know, what did what did Jesus say? And I love the passage, and I love to tie it in with this, uh, you know, kind of kind of idea because. So you, you have the, the, the size is magnificent by size. You know, if we just look at size alone or, or the, the fish or the bread, and Jesus said, bring it here to me. That's key. That's key. Whatever we have to offer, no matter how small or how large, all God asks us ever to do, bring it to me. I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's it. That's that sin nature. That's our human nature. Like, you know, I'm going to figure this one out. I, you know, maybe we even think of it in a half good way. Like, I don't want to bother God with this. This is this is silly. No, it's not silly. In that passage of scripture, Jesus said, "Bring it here to me." And what did He do? He blessed it and it multiplied. Whoa! To the fact that I love what the passage says, and I'm sure different translations says different things, but. I love what NIV says, and it says they all ate, which was key, but you know what else it says? They were satisfied. Man. I mean, think about it. The devil wants us to have a life that's just not satisfying. It's just, bleh. I hate my life. <laughs> you know? And, and and my oldest kind of struggles that way, with contentment kind of thing. I mean, uh, kind of throughout her life, honestly. And she's doing so much better, and praise God, hallelujah. But, you know, I mean, it just, we get kind of wrapped around the axle sometimes in terms of, of, of stuff like that. And, and, and yet Jesus said, bring it to me. He, he blessed it. 
They all ate, they were satisfied, and two more things happened in that passage. Not only did they were they satisfied, but there were leftovers. Oh man, here, here we were looking at it. Yeah, you know, we look at it from a very human, worldly perspective of, yeah, hey, I don't have enough. <laughs> yeah, I may as well just try out the ice cream. Ah, I, I give up. He said, I don't give up. Corinthians talks about God just, just blesses in his grace and, and his, his power is made known through our weaknesses. The world says, no, it's got to be your strengths. And it is, it's both, really. But man, God loves to use our weaknesses, those things that are the size of a mustard seed. Why? Because when, 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 when we think we don't have enough, that's when we go and we bring it to God and we go to God with it. I mean, that's what He wants. When I think I'm so good at something and I can do it on my own, God says, <laughs> be careful. You know? And we all have our strengths. My boss and I, I have a, an amazing boss. I'm so, I'm so thankful that the, he's the command chaplain for all of Camp Pendleton for the Bay side. I'm the deputy and, and, um, and, uh, he just, and he just, he recognizes he's an introvert. <laughs> so he goes, go do your thing. And, and really my, my job is mostly kind of supervising and administration. So is his. And like, so for a people person like me, it's like, most days kind of half stink. You know, like, oh, really, God, this is what, you know, as you kind of move and you've been in 20 plus years and you're, an old, you know, a commander and a deputy, you're like, yeah, I guess this is my, I kind of like an Excel, I'm kind of like an executive officer for, for the chaplains in my position. Which, uh, so I have to, I love to get my people fixes, like stuff like, like preaching. I mean, that's, that's my number one, I love to preach. And, and so I, you know, so it's just fun. And, and yet, you know, recognizing, hey, we all have strengths and weaknesses. And, uh, you know, but amazing as we look at that. And even I think, man, I was only willing to give God, like, it was Easter Sunday, April, April uh, 22nd, 1973. A buddy of mine invited me to church. I go, yeah, okay, it's Easter. Yeah, I'll go. Nah, whatever. Nah. Well, I went that morning. My, my friend talked to me all afternoon. We looked at a key verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Behold, uh, we are a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All is new. And, I, and man, that verse just hit me like a ton of bricks. I go, that's what I need. I still didn't make a, a commitment then. You know, kind of, oh, I don't know. You know, let's, let's figure this out. So he shared. He invited me back to church Sunday night. I'd never been twice in one day like that. I mean, I was like, that was a miracle right there. You know, I thought, wow, if I go twice on Easter, I won't have to go Christmas. Yeah, that kind of But yeah, but then the pastor gave an altar call. I, and I wasn't sitting by my buddy because he was singing in the choir, but another old, a guy that I knew, and this would have been in, in uh, ninth grade, uh, 1973, as a, uh, uh, for us junior high at that time went 7th, 8th, and ninth. But I sat by another guy that I knew since 6th grade. And he gave me like the Holy Spirit nudge with his pff, elbow in me. What do you think? Oh, good. Now, I mean, I mean, it's amazing what God uses, you know, an elbow. Beep, you know? And, uh, and, and so I went forward, trusted Christ. And amazed, I got all I was willing to give for me personally was a mustard seed amount of time to God. And yet, what did he say with the fishing bread? Just bring it to me. Just bring your little, you know, little minute little piece of time. That that's all you were going to give me? I mean, God kind of almost tipped God off in some ways, but yet he's, he's still willing to work with us. So here it is, God. I, I don't know, but here's what, here's what I got for you. You know, and, 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 and and wow, they all ate. They, you know, they were satisfied. There were leftovers, and not only that, the, clap, the crowd, the crowd, the crowd was amazed. I mean, not that we want to do things to amaze people, but wow, you know, it was to the glory of God. <clears throat> you know, yet here you have in, in, in Mark where he says, "Hey, the, you know, what, what about the growth of the mustard seed?" Verse thirty-one. It says, "It's it's it's a uh, it's like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It's the smallest of all seeds." And then verse thirty-two, but it becomes the largest. You know, I mean, so it, it requires growth. It was planted in the ground. You know, it made me think when thinking about being planted. Uh, <laughs> I could tell all kind. Of, I, I was a city boy, even though I grew up in Nebraska. I was a city boy. I wasn't no farmer. My dad, as a warrior, him and a buddy, they bought a farm one time thinking that would be a good investment. Nah, it wasn't. It was a bad, bad idea, but we sure had fun growing up. We went out to the farm. Oh, this was, I mean, the house was all crumbled. I mean, you could never live out there, you know. It was just, but it still was fun. You know, but again, you think about being planted in the ground. Where are we planted? I love what Psalm chapter 1, verse 3 says. And... Um, 
And you may be, again, maybe a familiar, obviously, psalm that, uh, but verse 3 and just talks about they were like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves uh, never, never, never withered, and they prospered in all that they did. Again, other, other translations probably stayed a little different, obviously, but uh, this that idea of planted the tree that was the kind of big old oak tree planted by streams of, of living water kind of thing of just you know where where it was it was fruitful you know where are we planting ourselves you know as that mustard seed no matter what we think we got where are we where are we planting ourselves you know second peter 3 3 18 reminds us as christians we need to grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord jesus christ are we growing in that, you know, is there a nourishment? Are we are we in an environment? Are we uh, where we're being nourished? And but not only that, if we've been a Christian a while, boy, are we are we able to nourish others? Can somebody come to us, me, you, whomever, and and, and, and maybe having that bad hair day? You know, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, I may as well go eat worms. And they could come to you and be refreshed because you're a Christian, be nourished because you're a Christian. You're able to say, yeah, I'll be all right. Let me pray for you. You know, it, it, again, as a Navy chaplain, I, I, I interact with a lot of people that want nothing to do with God. <laughs> it's common this day. That's yeah. <laughs> nothing new. You know, I mean, it, you know, but it's amazing. Even the person who might tell me they're an agnostic, atheist, or whatever, it, yeah, they might just share something with me, just a life, you know, something going on, or I may find out about something. Just, you know, I'm amazed that probably 99.9, if not really 100% of the time, I could say to somebody who even wants nothing to do with God and say, hey, can I pray for you? And I might not pray right then and there, but I'm going to make sure I pray for them and <laughs> maybe even have to write a note. But it gives me an opportunity to go back to that person and say, hey, I did pray for you. And that gets a little scary, doesn't it? Yeah, well, the opposite happened. Then what do we say? You, you know what I mean? I mean, it, does, it gets kind of scary sometimes. You think, well, if I tell them I prayed for them, and what, if they, what if the situation got worse? You know? Well, thanks, Jefflin. Would you pray? <laughs> you know, you know. But again, it still gives that opportunity, doesn't it? You know, can we be that source of, of, of nourishment? Um, you know, Hebrews eleven six reminds us of the growth kind of, of a mustard seed. Maybe our faith is is that of a mustard seed. You know, hey, our folks, my parents have and grandparents, maybe they got great faith. Oh, you know, but mine's this size. Does God say, all right? You're no good. You're useless. Absolutely not. But he does remind us in Hebrews 11.6 6 that, that uh, without faith it's impossible to please God. But you know what? What else does he remind us in, of, of the mustard seed? What can faith the size of a mustard seed do? You recall the, uh, in Matthew 17? What does he say it can do? What can it move? What can even the faith of a mustard seed move according to Scripture? Huh? Mountains? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, sure. I can't. I can't. You gotta say. You gotta like pretend. That, do you have a now? Do you have a brother? No. Do you have a sister? Yeah. Do you ever get mad at her? Yeah. Do you scream at her? Yeah. Okay. Use that. Like, use that voice to tell me what you said. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> or a church pastor. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, but again. Matthew 17 says, even the faith the size of a mustard seed could move a mountain. That, that's mind-boggling. I think I really I can't even explain that. Because our thoughts are not God's thoughts. You know, we, we think in finite terms, God thinks in infinite eternity terms. And it's hard for but that's okay. Because otherwise we think I can reason out my faith. And you can to a certain degree. And that's why we have apologetics. We can, we can think about stuff so long, but eventually we've got to take that step of faith. It's like, hey, I understand it this far and this long. But he says, even the faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. And maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe your faith is about this size. I, I don't know. But I don't know you guys personally. You know. God knows. We can't, we can't hide it, can we? I mean, we can try. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fake God out. You know, the Dr. Field question pops up then. How's that working for you? Oh, it didn't work so well. You do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So they go, God, here's what i got to offer today. Maybe it's this size. 
of, of, of whatever it might be. But what does he say when we when we allow? And again, like the fish and birds, said, God, I, I don't know, but here it is. He will bless it. It'll, it'll grow. It'll multiply. Your faith will grow. Wow, I prayed about this and wow. Wow. Come do good answer to prayer. And sometimes the answer might be no. Sometimes the answer to prayer might be wait. Sometimes it's yes. But they're all answers. You know, and yet, what does he say ultimately happens in, in verse 32? It says, but it becomes, the, the mustard seed becomes that largest plant from this little small little thing to a, just a huge plant tree kind of thing that it, 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 it grows, it becomes the largest of all garden plants and it grows long branches and birds can uh, make nest in it and, and rest in its shade. Different translations will say a little bit very similar, you know, but the, what's it saying? Birds could come to perch in it um, and its branches used for shade. You know, and I, I, the idea that comes to mind is, is just that of, hey, okay, it's, it, maybe the size of a mustard seed, but Hey, the growth of it, and what happens when it's kind of full grown, when, when it's really blossoming, when it's when we're fruitful as Christians, you know, and, and, and maybe like that mustard seed in the tree, and it, and it, the birds are able to come and, and, and I, I think use it for protection, you know, we, we kind of we kind of shade a, a person, you know, it's using the birds as that example, but what what do they do? And they're they're protected from uh, other translations will say from the scorching sun. <laughs> You know, and to me, that's just kind of the idea of the world. The world just, the devil just wants to <laughs> scorch us, you know, just burn us out. However, whatever, in, in, in whatever aspect of life, even ministry, you know, uh, you know, we can, we can, we can overdo it. It, it. It's taken me a long time at, at times, and I still have to be reminded. Unfortunately, I have a very godly wife. Uh, who reminds me? You know, she reminds me of several things. I, I'm an ideas guy, so I'll come up with these far-fetched ideas. Oh, this will be cool. Let's do this for Jesus. So, her eyes will start rolling around like she's demon possessed for a second, and then say, "Is this a God thing? A God idea or a Ray idea?" I don't, I don't know. I hope it's both. You know, and, and she makes me think and makes me pray, and, and that's a good thing. You know, but but you know, kind of kind of funny as well is is just you know. I, I have to learn sometimes, even in ministry, and, and that sometimes, even like when we pray, but sometimes no is the right and godly answer. I can't say yes to everything. And she, and she knows I have a hard time doing that. <laughs> yeah, I just want to do everything. Yeah, I remember our first tour of duty from doing youth ministry in Lincoln, Nebraska. Our first tour was Naples, Italy, and I come home and we had missionaries there that were hired by the military to, to, to run the youth ministry. They did a phenomenal job. Uh, overseas, it was uh, in Europe. It was it's called, and probably still is, Club Beyond, much like a campus life, youth for Christ, young life type of ministry in a way uh, for the military. And uh, in Japan, it was called Malachi Ministries. Uh, just it, in, interesting, neat opportunities of ministry. But so I was all excited, and the missionaries were just a great young couple. We became very dear friends. But I remember coming home initially and saying, "Hey, I'm going to start helping with the youth group." You know, because that was, I mean, that's my, that's my, one of my strengths. I mean, I, I, I still could do it, you know, today, in a sense, you know, and I have done it, uh, uh, in, in many, many, many of the bases. But, you know, my wife says, well, that's great. What are you going to give up? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. You know, so I had to kind of think through, you know, and, and, and see that. And yet, you know, I mean, again, here, as, as we become nourished and we become a, a source of strength for others and a source of maybe even protection and, and, and just where people could come and relax and find shelter from it, it, as just the mustard seed as, as it grows, as that tree would grow and, and, and shelter from the hot burning sun. Because, I mean, the world will try its hardest to, in one way or another, just to, to maybe burn your dreams, <laughs> so to speak, you, you know? Maybe just burn you out. I mean, just so many things. And Satan, if he can make you useless, he's won a battle, even for us as Christians. I mean, it may not be about salvation or, or putting your faith in Christ. If that's, a, if that's, if that's been done, then you're good to go. But man, and Satan's lost that major, major, major battle. But along the way, what's he going to try to do? He's just going to try, try different things to, to make you feel, oh, you, you, you're, you're only willing to give God this much time. You're a useless Christian. You know? Or you only have this much talent. Or whatever. whatever. And yet, you have to, you know what? Whatever I have is His. 
I'm going to just lay it on the altar. Even if it's the size of a mustard seed, of my time, my energy, whatever. You know, are we willing to give God even a mustard seed size of our, of our heart? I think he wants more. But it's got to start somewhere. You know, are we willing to do that? Or of our time, or our energy, or our talent, or our gifts, or our money. Um, you know, what happens when we do that? We see, we see others blessed. Uh, you know, to be able to play and, and, and lead others. I mean, leading adults in, in worship. Wow. You know, even though I couldn't understand anything that was being saying, you know, could get the English stuff I could. But you know, you know, I mean, it, you're, you still can be blessed. Even for me, not understanding the language necessarily. Oh, wow. Just hearing people sing and praising God. Wow. God's using me to do that. You know, I mean, I may not praise God as loud as maybe somebody else. Wow, I'm, I'm part of that. I'm part of. I'm a vessel. I'm uh, being used, an instrument used by God. Why? Because I was willing to give Him started with maybe the size of, of, of whatever my heart, my time, my energy, my talent, maybe my money. I remember again when I was in the Iraq. It was, it was summertime, so it was it was it was harder than the Dickens, as you can imagine. I mean, you know, you have those those <laughs> those porter johns. That's, I mean, they had other kind of regular commodes and whatever, but, it, you know, they were placed all around where we were at and, and our camps and stuff. And, and uh, man, you'd go out to those things, you kind of have to remind yourself how hot those were if you had to sit down on them. Like, woo! You almost wanted like a can of like Teflon, like Pam. You know, you'd spray in a pan for cook for, for a, that Pam stuff or in a pan for cooking. I did never try this, but it almost made sense to me. Like, you know, it might be worthwhile to spray this on that seed of that portage on. But, you know, I mean, like, oh my goodness, it was hot. But it was so hot. But one of the things I, I discovered, and, and I don't know how somebody sent me these, and, and but those freezy pops that you you know, those liquid kool aid things, and you put them in the freezer, and they get all frozen, and they're, oh, they're awesome. Yeah. People just start sending me those. And so my, my assistant and I, which I call an RP, Religious Program Specialist, and, and um, they gave us one of those little. <laughs> other uh, other people have these nice vehicles to drive around, more or less. I mean, GP type thing. Now we had like a little, like you see in the John John Deere uh, Gator. I mean, it just and, and, our, and you know, had our helmet on, our, our and our Kevlar, our protective gear. You couldn't go anywhere without having that on. I mean, here you're driving this John Deere Gator. I always felt like the, the music from the Wicked, you know, Wizard of Oz. You know, here we go driving down. But you know, we don't, hey, we don't care. We have a vehicle. We can get around and see our Marines and sailors. And so I had my wife also send me a, a freezer bag that I could put those things in. We'd drive around and just hand them out. And it, it was just a fun, it was kind of a ministry thing. It, it's just, it, to me, it's just funny what God is able and willing to, to use. Is there anything spiritual about a freezy pop? <laughs> no! But man, it was a blessing to people. And it gave me an avenue to just talk to people. I mean, not that I really need freezy pops to talk but. But one of the things that was cool was uh, a couple that I, I, I know very well back home in my home church in Nebraska. They had little kids at the time, and because and, uh, this was back in 07, and, and they took some of their, their uh, allowance money and, and tithed it to God and, and bought Freezy Pops and sent them to me. So it was really cool. So when I was back home, when I came back from Iraq, I went home and preached in, in my home church, and, and it was uh, Veterans Day of 07, so in November, and and uh, very fun, and, and they came up and I gave them uh, a military coin, that the chaplain court, or whatever coin thing, just to, as a token of, of thanks. But again, you know what? They were just, you know, was a lot of money that they had? No, that wasn't important. But what they did have, and they were learning that hey, it's important to give to God, whatever that might be. Here's what I got to offer, and he blessed it. And you know what? Sent it to us, and it bought us greasy pops, and you know they sent them and. They used their money to do that and send them over and allowed me to continue to take freezy pops to Marines and sailors and just, just have fun, you know, and end up talking to them about just their day and God and stuff and, and, and you know, whatever. What are, we, what are we willing, you know, when we're willing to just give it to God, you know, just like that fish and bread, other, you know, we'll be blessed. Others will be blessed. And not only that, we'll be satisfied and we'll find some contentment and happiness. And yeah, I mean, again, John, John, what, John, 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 John 10, 10, what does it tell us? Jesus came for what purpose? To, to, to make our life miserable and discourage us and make us just hate, hate family, life, and whatever. No! 
It's not what it says. It says Jesus came alive so that we might have life and have it how more abundantly fulfilled, satisfied. That there's a peace there. You know, truly God wants 100% of us 100% of the time. And yet it's got to start somewhere. Where is it going to start? Right there. You know, we're willing to give that. Maybe it starts with that mustard seed size of, of whatever. And God will bless it. And what a great thing to be satisfied. You know, in our walk with God. Uh, measure of magnificence. Where does it begin? May it begin with that size of, of whatever and giving it to God and just seeing Him, Him bless it. And um, hopefully we can do that, whatever it might be. Whatever the world is trying to tell you that now you couldn't use that for God. Trust me. Whatever, and I, I even look at it this way, whatever even your passion is. I remember one time, or many times, but taking kids on the, actually through Azusa Pacific, uh, on their missions trip. Uh, down in Mexico. They still go. We have friends that just are down there. They're, they're coming back up tomorrow. They're, they, it, it's just blossom for them. And it all started when, when I went back there and started doing youth ministry there. And I said, well, we did this in California. If the church will allow me, and they did. Um, bring the kids out to California and take them down to Mexico for that missions trip. And I, I, mean, I, I left the church 20 years ago. They're still doing that. And a buddy of mine, he, he takes a group down there. I mean, this thing's blossoming. They just went down and did a did nothing more than a men's retreat for the uh, Mexican men from one of the couple of key churches down there that they've done ministry at. But it, you know, just it, 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 I mean, I would never, I never even had that idea. I mean, it's amazing what God will just take and run with when you know. But I do remember one time, and we drove by an area. It was kind of a projects type of area. I mean, it just. <laughs> It looked like South Central, you know, L.A. kind of area of just, man, these, these apartments. With, it had this basketball court, but there were no hoops up there. And we go, you know, maybe we should buy some hoops and just see what happens. So we did. Man, a bunch of kids came out and go, wow, this is kind of cool. Well, let's just leave the, I don't know if we should leave those hoops up. Maybe, I don't know, you know, but we did. You know what? We came back in the morning before, as we were getting ready to set up one place to do vacation Bible school. And then we're going to send a group back and... And those hoops were gone. We go, oh, see, look at that. But you know what? We discovered that somebody took them down so they wouldn't get stolen. And they put them back up. And we go, wow. This was unintentional, undesigned, but we just saw an opportunity and we seized it. But then it, made, it got my kind of heart and head going. Am I a basketball guy? No. Am I good at basketball? No. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm more of a cheerleader type, okay? I mean... I, I, I'm not going to wear the skirt, of course, but, uh, you, you know, but I, I'm just, I mean, that's more my strength, like, let me just, let me just encourage you, oh, go team, you know, so loud and obnoxious, I usually get kicked out of games, but that's, that's okay, but for the next year, I went to my high school, some of my high school guys, and, and, and um, I just said, hey, I need a group of guys that just love playing basketball, oh my gosh, our eyes got about as big as basketballs, I mean, is a basketball a spiritual thing? But that was one of their passions. I said, I just need a group of guys that will do nothing more. While another team is doing vacation Bible school at the church, I'm going to drop you guys off, and you're going to, all you're going to do is play basketball for the most part. But, but I made them also, of course, the spiritual element come, and I said, what, what I want you to do also is I want you to write your testimonies out, and what you're going to do, you're going to play basketball for a while, then we're going to have water for everybody, and you're going to take a break, and you're going to hand out water and say, hey, you know there's more to life than basketball, and then I want you to share your testimony. Nothing more, nothing less. It wasn't like, oh, you better go to college for a while, better go to seminary and get a, you know, get a master's in theology, and then you could do this basketball. No. Just all I want you to do is share your testimony. You know, and, 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 and it, was, it was just such a cool thing. And, I, you know, again, it's just like, what do we have to give God? What's my passion? I remember doing a men's, a men's golf thing. We met at the golf course once a month. Uh, in, in Italy with, with a group of men and we went through a book and sometimes we'd go afterwards and play golf sometimes. You know, just because that guys don't like to play golf. Now I do like to play golf. Am I any good? I'm not as good at golf as I am at basketball, but I still like, I like to play golf. Uh, and I'll play any sport. You know, but I mean, and that's, that's not important. You know, it could, it could be an old car thing. I mean, you know, whatever our passion is, if we're willing to just say, God, here it is. 
And if you need to take this passion away from it, okay, but, you know, I, I just, I, I don't, for the most part, I don't see God doing that. I'm seeing, I, you know, he uses who we are, our strengths, our weaknesses, our personality, our passions, and, 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 and just say, here it is, God, just take my fish and bread and bless it. Well, again, I don't know what God's laid on, on your hearts in, in terms of this or what you have or think you have to offer or not offer or whatever, but I hope it encourages you to say, figure it out. You know, say, God, here it is. Let's just see what happens with this. I don't know. I was trying to get my son kind of involved, and he just wasn't, because I saw it as a minister. I thought it would be cool. You know, he's, he still skateboards, you know, and uh, he's a skater dude. Looks like a skater dude, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and that's okay, you know, but just what a, what a fun. I've seen some phenomenal skate ministers, you know, stuff like that. I just, I just like seeing stuff. I just, it's just fun to see what, what, what's out there and what's, what's around and what's, what's available. I like to run. Uh, so what you know, I've, I've been able several times to uh, in, even do the opening prayer, like for the Marine Corps Marathon in, in Washington D.C. Uh, you know, one one year uh, I just started making, and it was from Iraq, and I, I trained for the marathon in Iraq. <laughs> that was that was miserable. I was gonna that was that was no that was a dumb idea, but I did it, and and, and I can but. I had finagled through some different resources because I tried to do this before and I got the kind of the stone walled and the brick, you know, the closed door, and ah, that ain't gonna happen. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, blah. So, but I go, and eh, I'll we'll give up easily. So I, I, I just got smarter and I figured out who the command chaplain was in Quantico by DC, and I happened to know him, so I contacted him directly and said, hey, what do you think about doing a, a worship service prior to the marathon? I go, because, you know, it's on, a lot of those sports events are on Sundays. I don't like that, but it is what it is. You know, I said, let's take advantage of it. Let's, hey, what if we do a worship service before? And I was really thinking the night before, you know, like usually they have a sponsoring hotel. I thought, oh, maybe we'll get a room we can do it out. Oh, no, they had me do it before. Oh, dark 30. I mean, it was dark out still. We're doing a worship service. And then I ran the marathon, and then I drove up to New York. I go, this was just, a, I go, this was not my idea. Like, what's this supposed to happen? But, you know, it, it just did. You know, it's just taking thoughts and ideas and dreams and passions and say, yeah, here it is. Here's my mustard seed. What do you want to do with this? You know, a talent, a gift, a, 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 a strength, or whatever it might be. I mean, I love I love Nebraska football. I've been able to do a couple pregame chapel services for uh, uh, the Cornhuskers for, for Nebraska. Um, and I tried to do it uh, not this past year, but the year before when, when Nebraska played UCLA like out here. But they, I, I contacted them again because that would have been the third time I got to do it. I, and they said, ah, chaplain, we have a, we got a team chaplain, and he's going to be traveling with the team. I go, oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was by, yeah, that would have been cool. You know, again, but, but it's just, you know, finding stuff out. Just go, I, God, I don't know. You want to use this? I don't know. Um, and, uh, but fun. And let me pray, and then I don't know how much time we have. I know the picnic tables are still up, so it's going to be hard to have. I, I can tell, you know, I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I can, tell, I can tell certain things. But let me uh, close this in, in prayer and, and um, you know, we'll just fellowship a bit, I reckon. God, thanks for today. Um, and I thank you for parables and the, and the illustrations of stories and the things that they show and demonstrate in the snapshot of of just the kingdom of God and how things can start small and we just, man, when we give it to you, God, we don't know. <laughs> it's amazing what can be done and as Ephesians 3.20 tells us and reminds us that, God, you were able to do far more than any one of us could ever imagine. And I know many of us have a, a pretty vivid imagination and yet, God, it doesn't even compare to what you want to do in us, through us, and for us, and around us, and, and everything. And it's just bringing whatever it is to you, just that mustard seed size of, of time or energy or money or talent or, or passion or dream and, and just seeing how you want to bless it and multiply it and just see people around us be blessed and, and you and ourselves just in our walk with you be satisfied to a point that we just go, wow, this is what it's all about. This is how, what it means to serve you. God, thank you. Uh, help us to do that, to be faithful, that we would grow in our faith. And um, gather yeah, just we just read nothing but leftovers, uh, and uh, we thank you for that in Jesus' precious and holy name, Amen. All right, we probably could have tried to like multiply.